Well, thank you all uh, very much for coming and, and sharing in this event. Uh, some of these things I haven't seen for 20 years. Uh, and some of them were honestly so dirty that uh, we had to hose them off to get them <laughs> into the gallery. Uh, as you look around the um, look around the gallery, you'll see some reoccurring uh, themes. Uh, there are houses and ladders and salmon, and they all relate to the idea of the cycle of life. That life is a continuous uh, cycle, and and uh, these ideas come from basically from my travels around the world and from my study of Native American culture. And uh, one of the things that I realize is that uh, all these cultures have, have the same things in common, that we're all seeking to understand the mysteries of life and existence. Uh, and, and that, I decided, was a very important theme for my artwork. And so the ladders represent uh, one's travel through life. And some of them, as you'll see, one is, uh, is says climbing may sometimes be difficult. Uh, one says uh, ladder through adversity. You know, life isn't always easy as we progress uh, through there. Uh, the spirit houses, which are inspired by many things from around, uh, around the world, but particularly uh, the, the uh, grave houses in Alaska, where we spend a lot of time are inspired by that and the branches coming out of them symbolize the idea that nature reclaims things and and the cycle continues uh, and the salmon also are symbols uh, you know they they go up the rivers um, spawn uh, lay their eggs uh, go down to the ocean and they have to go through all kinds of dangers on the way and those that survive come back and uh, the cycle starts over again. So that's kind of what a lot of my art is about. You can look at Peter's work in several different uh, points. First might be the initial reaction. Uh, for example, uh, the fish and seeing a uh, spaceship going off and so on. Uh, there's more to it than once you get involved in it. The same thing, the delightful things at the front have a lot more in them. And there's uh, the introduction as he's gone along in more and more of the Native American theme that became a very important part of this exhibit and how it reoccurs over and over again and uh, developing a very a respectful interpretation of the Native American and what they have gone through and existed over the years. So it's, it's a very beautiful thing as you begin to study the different works. I absolutely adore and love his work. And what I, I think admire most about his work is that it encompasses his life in a sense of his experiences. And I met Peter about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, we both teach Native American Studies courses, and he teaches for us the Native American Art and History and Culture class. It's cross-listed with our program. And I, what, I, what I admire about it, because I'm a little self-focused, in a sense that I can see the Native American experience in his work. The spirit houses are incredibly moving to me. They're very prominent in the Northwest Coast among tribal people. The ladders, the kivas for the Southwest Indian people are very uh, meaningful. And this piece here is powerful. I, I find it to be, for me, the most powerful piece in his collection. The beauty, I think, and the importance of some of what he does, and particularly in the classes that he teach about minority art or Native American art, is to bring forward that Natives have an art form, that this has been long enduring, and it's very skilled, it's very rich in its history, it's very rich in its technique. And so I think the class that he teaches is so vitally important to be part of a curriculum when students are learning about art. And it's just not about Europe and European art and art styles, but that people 
have been doing different forms of art from time immemorial. And, and so it's nice that students are being exposed to the richness of other types of forms of art. And then I just enjoy his interpretation of native art and how, how he can, can make it and claim it as his own in a way that's, that, that's meaningful for him as an artist. And so I just love the, his interpretations of, of native symbols and actions and art forms as well. And so this is really a reflection of who he is, which is really complex and rich and, and lively. I, I just love his work. What strikes me about Peter's work is, is his connection to the earth. I love uh, the way he uses natural uh, earth forms and pieces in order to uh, get out his expression of what he's feeling. His work has a broad appeal for on a lot of different levels. Um, number one, because a lot of the objects that he puts in his work are recognizable objects, but he puts his own spin on them. And so um, ladders are wavy and they disappear into the clouds and uh, all of the other kinds of images that are based on realistic uh, material has uh, a whimsy and uh, a new and creative way of looking at things that people are familiar with. The diversity is one thing that's delightful. Uh, the use of the materials, I, I find them to be uh, fun. I, the colors, the colors make me smile as I'm going by. The titles are, are wonderful because I see, uh, as, I go, as I go around, you can sort of see um, as he's moved through life, uh, some of the uh, thoughts that have come through his mind. And, and when you just look at, at this particular piece where it says climbing may be difficult at times, you know, and life can be sort of that way. It can be difficult at times, but tucked in there are the rungs and, and we sort of have to sometimes work through it all. It's just, it's delightful. I want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Jack Kerfman. Uh, Jack, as many of you know, is the uh, designer of the installation here, and uh, it's a real honor to have Jack uh, do this. Uh, he, makes, uh, he makes the artwork just look great. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to have someone like Jack who is hung and handled work by people like Rauschenberg and, and Andy Warhol and Sam Francis and, and Red Rooms and all these uh, famous artists, uh, Jim Dine, uh, that we had here. And uh, I remember uh, Robert Rauschenberg, who's considered by many to be one of the leading 20th century artists in the United States, who, who upon seeing his work displayed by Jack, said, this, I, you know, he's shown all over the world. He said, this is the very best installation of my work that, uh, that he ever had. And that comes from somebody like Rauschenberg. Uh, you know, I'm just thrilled to have Jack uh, do this uh, for me. I'm always pleased when somebody asks me to uh, design an exhibit for them. And luckily, uh, I've known Peter since he arrived here some years ago. So um, uh, a lot of the work was familiar. And so I, I knew about the early things. When I work on exhibits, I try to analyze them as far as subject matter and to make the, uh, the viewer, the gallery goer, experience things. And I, I think of my exhibits, and a lot of them, are like theater, that you have an opening part, and people see that, and then they move through it. But I never try to reveal the end of the story. Uh, you may get clues, and when you're coming into the show, you'll see something way off in the distance but then all of a sudden, once you're in it, it disappears, and then that comes back again. So it's, it's to me, a lot like theater. And uh, the artwork, as well as the viewers, are the ones participating in the theater production. We communicate in many ways. Visual, the visual arts is, is one kind of language that we use to communicate. And my artwork, uh, in my artwork, I try to communicate on different levels. Uh, there's the obvious, the uh, visual 
uh, playfulness, uh, the color, um, and the, the objects that we first become aware of when we look at the when we look at the work. But there's a secondary level of symbolism, which uh, uh, where there are hidden meanings that the casual viewer might miss. I believe that ritual is very important in the process of making art. If ritual is ignored, then the work might lose its significance in the great scheme of things. Throughout the years, uh, I've relied on symbols of ladders, houses, and salmon uh, to communicate the idea of the cycle of life. These symbols uh, are kind of universal symbols, especially the ladder and houses. Uh, as I've traveled the world and studied different cultures, uh, I became aware of the fact that uh, uh, ladders have been used for hundreds and in some cases uh, over a thousand years uh, as symbols for our progression through this uh, life that we uh, have here on earth. In the 1980s I was uh, with a Fulbright group in India and I became aware of the fact that bodies were being carried through the streets in the early morning hours tied to ladders, ladders of life. Uh, these highly decorated ladders would carry the body to their funeral pyres on the banks of the Ganges River. So the ladder became an important symbol uh, for my, in my artwork. Houses also were very important, spirit houses. Uh, they defined our homes, whether they're huts or palatial mansions, they define our space here on earth. And so they become a very important uh, vessel for the spirits of those who live within. I've spent a lot of time in Alaska and in the Bering Sea area and up and down the coast and have had a chance to uh, visit uh, Russian Orthodox cemeteries where spirit houses were constructed over graves and Athabascan uh, uh, cemeteries in the interior of Alaska and in British Columbia and um, among the uh, Eskimo people in northern Alaska, where spirit houses were set over the graves, not to contain the bodies of the deceased, but to contain the spirits of the deceased. And, um, and so th these symbols uh, be, were natural for uh, my artwork, which, which dealt with the idea of the, of the transcending spirit uh, over the material um, decay uh, of our life and our belongings and our homes here on earth. The branches that extend out from these spirit houses represent the cycle of life where nature has reclaimed the house even though the spirits are still alive. Uh, the feathers and, and ribbons and pieces of cloth that are often, that I oftentimes tie to these branches uh, are inspired by many things, including the um, prayer flags that are outside of Shinto temples, uh, such as I viewed in Kyoto, Japan. They also uh, are present in the prayer offering flags of cloth and, and feathers and other items like this that are tied to uh, bushes uh, 
in the Southwest and among the Plains Indians. And as they blow in the breeze, they carry the prayers uh, of the people who tied them there. And, and so these represent the uh, uh, good wishes and the prayers um, for these uh, spirits. Salmon. Salmon are, are a wonderful metaphor for the cycle of life. Uh, they swim up streams uh, against great difficulty, sometimes using fish ladders that have been constructed to help them uh, to, to uh, get to their spawning grounds. And there uh, they lay their eggs and, uh, and die and a new generation is born. And these, and these uh, uh, fish then swim down the rivers uh, going through all kinds of difficulty uh, and uh, possibility of being eaten by bears, caught by fishermen, or just, uh, uh, or just having other kinds of difficulty. And then they return to the same place and they struggle up against uh, the current uh, all the way. And so this kind of relates to my spirit la or these ladders uh, that, uh, that I have ladder through adversity. Uh, uh, one ladder is entitled uh, climbing may be difficult at times and I think this is a good symbol of what our life uh, is like. Uh, it's not always easy uh, but we, as we progress up this ladder we become closer and closer to the spirit world. <laughs> 